and welcome to the U.S. Army Materiel Command's News Dispatch, where you'll find the latest news and information about the command. I'm Felicia Thompson from the Office of Public and Congressional Affairs. History came to life as one of the original Tuskegee Airmen from World War II recently visited AMC's Army Sustainment Command to share his story of pride, struggle, and accomplishments about one of this nation's greatest Army air units. John Connor from ASC Public Affairs brings us this report. Don Elder, who served as an aircraft mechanic for the P-47 aircraft with the 99th Fighter Squadron seven decades ago, proved to be pretty popular with attendees as he was the guest speaker February 4th to support African American Black History Month, which was sponsored by the Army Sustainment Command. It's amazing that people could have that kind of uh, that kind of anger or that kind of discrimination to get somebody just because we, they were a different color, even though they were pulling the same missions as, as the white soldiers or the white officers. The accomplishments of the Tuskegee Airmen, named after the Army Airfield where they trained in Alabama, are second to none. For example, they were the first black men in the U.S. military to serve in aviation-related career fields. Their mission was to escort bombers in the European war zones. All totaled, there were 19,000 Tuskegee Airmen with about 300 of the original class still alive. Elder, along with other Tuskegee Airmen, received the nation's highest civilian award in 2007 from President George Bush. Other recipients include Walt Disney, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jackie Robinson, and the Wright brothers, to name a few. Well, certainly it is a a great honor to have been finally recognized to be among such a group of people. So when you say, what does it feel like? I just feel humbled, and honored, the fact that I, we were selected to be in that group. And as I said earlier, I think that I could attest to the kinds of things we done, did, at, did at the time. Uh, certainly it was without fanfare, but more importantly, we had no one to turn to other than in, within ourselves. So we just feel that we've done, we did what was necessary. Equal opportunity events like this are held throughout the year across the Army to provide a better understanding of all Americans to the service and the workforce. A lot of knowledge of actually what happened in World War II, the struggles that they had to come through, and what really amazed me is the programs that he have out there for the children for the future today and how young they are starting out. While civil rights have improved since the 1940s, Elder told attendees how racism and bigotry thrived in America and its military during his war service. During that time, they had some 5,000 German prisoners of war at Danbury, Indiana. <coughs> The greatest experience I had was they were treated much, the prisoners of war were treated much better than us at Danbury, Indiana. They slept in the barracks and we slept in tents across the road. That was my introduction to the military in the United States. But he did live to see milestones in race relations, which brought greater equality to African Americans in the military and the populace at large. But there is still work to do. As the president has said, and maybe I think this as well, just an open conversation amongst people that feel comfortable talking to each other. Uh, you know, like they say, one of the most segregated uh, organizations we're still in is the church. You know, so if we can just feel comfortable about being amongst each other, everything will work. It'll just fall into place. After the war, Elder went on to a distinguished aviation career with Rockwell International lasting 33 years, despite retiring there and then from other future positions in Ohio and Texas, his life still includes public service to help today's youth, a group he calls the future generation. And next month he and other Tuskegee Airmen plan to make a trip to Iraq to visit with wounded U.S. troops. I'm John Connor for the Army Sustainment Command Public Affairs Office at Rock Island Arsenal. Thanks to equal opportunity programs like these, AMC's employees garner invaluable first-person accounts from living historians. With each word, we are able to learn of the personal struggles and hardships that were encountered. And then we learn of the resilience and perseverance that got them through those struggles. It gives us hope. That concludes this week's edition of the AMC News Dispatch. 
I hope you will join me and my team again as we bring you weekly news and information about the command. You can also visit our website at www.amc.army.mil to view our current and past news dispatches and newscasts. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.